Welcome to this edition of the Western Officiating Development Partnership. In this segment, we're going to talk about linesmen and the important role that they play in the game. We're going to cover positioning. We're going to talk about how we work the blue line. We're going to talk about icing. We're going to talk about some face-offs. And we're going to talk about awareness, which is probably the most important thing to achieve success as a linesman. Let's get started. You know, I, I, I really feel that linesmen are an integral part of the team, the officiating team, and uh, it's critical that they're working together. So now uh, with our new systems that we have in place, they're continually covering for one another and uh, I guess first identifying when your partner is out of position or maybe when your partner's struggling, jumping in and helping them. And then once that opportunity is gone, then getting back and getting into their own into their own positions. In this one, you can see how the back linesman moves up the ice. He keeps all the players in front of him to heighten his awareness. He makes himself available if he needs to help his partner in his blue line. In this segment, you see the back linesman moves up, makes himself available for his partner line, and then you can see how he ebb and flows. He doesn't stand stationary. He moves up and back with the play, reading as he moves in, in case he needs to go in on a whistle, and then how he backs out, uses his backward skating to get back to his line. In this clip, the linesman on the blue line is pushed back. The back linesman recognizes there's a potential that he needs to cover. He works hard to get to his partner's blue line. He assists in the call. Once his partner comes back to the blue line, he retreats towards the red line. In this highlight, teams on the power play. Both linesmen position themselves near the blue line. And watch how the play ebb and flows. As it comes on, on the near side, the close line is going to move back out towards the red line and let his partner assume the blue line. And then the play comes back in, transitions to the other side. It's the same kind of ebb and flow. So whatever officials on the side where potentially the puck could be come out near the blue line or be dumped out on those boards has backed off and allowed his partner to take that line. So with regards to work in the, uh, working the blue line, uh, it is so counterintuitive that when the play is coming towards you, that, that you, you, sometimes your, your best, if, if you're going to be in a position where you're going to get caught up in the play, sometimes your best way not to is actually move towards the play. So the, the hockey is a game of angles. Everything's coming off the boards. And, and if, you, if you make the angle too sharp, they're not going to hit you. They're not going to hit you with the puck. You're giving them more boards down the ice for them to, to take that puck and, and bounce it off the boards. So when the, when the play is coming towards you and, and uh, you, you, you recognize that the play is on your side of the ice and they're going to be tight to the boards, move in maybe a foot or two off the blue line and, and that should be about as far as you want to go. Maybe three, maybe four, but you, you don't want to be going down too far because once you go down too far, you take yourself out of position to get that good angle on the, on the blue line as the play is coming across. If you can get yourself so that you stop a couple feet inside the blue line as the play's coming across, get that good view, view of the line as the puck's coming across, um, and if need be, when the, when the player's coming towards you with the puck, take that step back towards them so that you've exposed more, more boards, more ice down ice for them to get past you. Again, it's really counterintuitive because we're always taught that you want to you wanna get away from the puck, you want to turn your back to the puck, and I mean that's the last thing you want to do. So if you can get in the mindset of moving towards it, Sometimes that's your, that's your best view. Working the line as the back linesman, you need to be aware of what's happening at that blue line, especially when the play is on your partner's side of the ice. I know if I'm working a game and the play is moving up my partner's blue line, he's going to be in a position where a lot of times he's, he might not have that best view of the line. So I need to be aware of that and be moving up towards my, towards my partner's line. In these highlights, we talk again about working the blue line, about creating angles for the players to use the boards. In this first clip, linesman slides down the boards, recognizing the player is going to dump the puck off the boards and out. And by this, he's given him more boards and less of an angle. And on this highlight, it's the opposite. The linesman recognizes moving towards the red line will create a better angle for the player to dump the puck in. He gives the player an angle to dump it in. He lets the players go by and he moves into his blue line and still has a good position to make a call. On this clip, the linesman done a good job. He's positioned himself inside the blue line to have a good angle. He recognizes as the play comes towards him that he needs to move out towards the red line to create a better angle and give the players more room. 
On this play, we're positioned well outside the blue line. We recognize now it's gonna be a close play at the blue line. We move ourselves in, again, to have a better angle to make the correct call. On this one, the linesman does a really good job. He's positioned well in the blue line. He moves both inside and outside the blue line to get a better view. And notice how he moves towards the play, which is on the far side of the ice. So he creates a better angle, a better view. Not only does he see the play better, but he also sells the call better. On this play, the linesman drops the puck and recognizes that the puck goes down the wall towards his partner's blue line. He recognizes that he needs to put himself in a position that he can aid in calling a blue line if needed. So he works hard to the blue line to cover his partner and then he'll back up afterwards. I, I think that, that one call that we have, that, that there is some judgment to it. Um, offsides, it's, it's obviously black or white. Icing, there's a little bit of judgment to it. So um, the, key with, the key with the icing is, is being connected to the play the entire time. Seeing it from the point that the puck is released off the stick, being aware of the on-ice strength of the, of the players, or of the team, sorry, um, and uh, following the play all the way through the ice. Don't, don't ever disconnect from it. Uh, watch what's going on with the goaltenders. Uh, if the goaltender is coming out, um, you know, being being aware right from right from the start of the play to the end of the play, and and with the speed of the game now, and with how quick the the shot happens and deflections can happen, you need to stay connected. On this clip, back linesman initiates icing. He does a good job moving towards his partner's blue line to be there in case the play is waved off. He does a good job now communicating with the benches as he comes back and prepares for the faceoff. That's that's you. That's 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 our bread and butter. Is our, is our face-offs, and uh, we want to conduct the face-offs that are fair. They're not always going to be perfect. There's, uh, I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I've seen a perfect face-off. But if if we can get them fair, consistent, um, face-offs are a critical part of the game now. It's it's a it's a possession of the puck, and that's that's what the whole game is about: is possession of the puck. And these guys are so good on their face-offs that uh, we need to be as good on our, on our face-offs as they are uh, on theirs. Once, once, we've, uh, once we've dropped the puck, um, take a quick look back over, over your shoulder, see, see where the players are coming in from behind. Sometimes our best position is not even moving at all. Stay right where you are, keep your skates planted. Your, your, your base of support is best when it's, both skates are on the ice. Now when it's safe to, to exit, the, exit the zone, Couple, couple C cuts back towards the uh, towards the boards, going in the opposite direction of which way the puck is moving, and then C cut back to the uh, back to the blue line. In this clip, the linesman communicates with the centers. He does a good job of setting them. They're fair. Puck goes down. Linesman waits for an avenue. He recognizes now he has space in the boards. He backs out to the blue line. He keeps all the players in front of him, and he has a view of the play on his way out of the zone. On this clip. Again, we sent the centers, we have a fair face off. The linesman backs out, he recognizes the puck is on the opposite side of the ice. He works hard to get to his blue line. He communicates with his partner across the ice that he is now gonna take control of that line and his partner can back off. As the back linesman looking into the end zone, it's good to, good to watch waist up and then so you can catch the high sticks, the elbows, the flagrant fouls that might go missed away from the play. It's good to catch those. The front linesman needs to be a little bit more puck focused to catch the puck out of play, who, it, who it's tipped off of, who it's shot. Um, I think awareness is one of the big things because our job, well, other than calling offsides and ice things or whatever, is uh, making the referee's job easier. If we do our job, the referee's life is significantly easier. And if, if we do, don't do our jobs, we don't get to certain locations, we don't have good awareness, then, then it makes the referee's life a little more difficult. So I think that's something that's pretty important is picking up hot spots, awareness, communication, um, just things that generally make the referee's life a little bit easier. On this highlight, we talk about awareness, but we also talk about in-game awareness. Here's a great example where the penalty is expiring and the linesman on the near side has recognized that he has pointed to the player coming on the penalty box. He's communicated not only to his partners, but to the teams that now we're at full strength. This is good in-game awareness. On this highlight, linesmen do a great job with hustle and awareness, and they put themselves in a position where they can help if needed. Nothing materializes here. We don't have a scrum, but our body presence and our verbal being in that spot has diffused the situation. On this highlight, recognize some awareness. The whistle goes, the linesmen recognize there are two potential hotspots. First linesman goes to the one in the corner and diffuses that. He then joins his partner in front of the net. We do a good job of communication. We talk to players. 
We put ourselves between the two players and we defuse the situation. On this highlight, again, we have a scrum with some potential hotspots. The linesmen work very hard with Hustle again. They go to different hotspots. They use their body language, they use their body positioning, and their verbal to defuse the situation. With their awareness and their Hustle get in, what they have done is they've made the referee's job a lot easier. Basically, they've defused situations without the referee having to get involved. We've seen some great examples of what it takes to be a good linesman. Being a good linesman isn't just calling offsides and icings. It's all the other things that we do in the game. It's our awareness, covering for our partner the blue line, calling icings, working hard on our face-offs, our scrum management, and how we defuse situations, helping the referee when he needs input on a play. Being a linesman means being part of the team. And when we come together and we work hard, the whole team's successful. Continue to work hard. We'll see you in the next segment.